finally my thumbnail will be me crying. Hey guys, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you or someone very close to you has thyroid cancer and you don't know what to do. I was there too. I had no idea what to do or how to prepare or what it was going to be like to have my thyroid taken out or how I would feel after surgery. So I thought I would make this video and help people kind of prepare, get some things together. That really helped me a lot and I wish I knew that ahead of time. So whether you yourself have thyroid cancer, if you're having another surgery on your neck, or you're just a really awesome friend or family member that wants to support someone else and doesn't really know how, then just keep watching. So today I have eight items that I found really helpful. They might not work for everybody, but they're a good starting off point. So I'll just get into the first one. The first one that I have is that you should really stock up on really soft, squishy ice packs. So these ones have like little, they look like little squishy clear peas or beads or I don't know, something like that. Um, those are so nice to have because this area, it gets so sensitive after surgery that you don't want anything hard. Like for example, a lot of people have these for lunch boxes or just have them in their freezer. Um, those don't work so well because they're not flexible. These are much better. I got them probably off Amazon and they have a soft side as well. So you can kind of just like push it up and like lay down and it's not it's not going to be hard it's not going to be heavy but it's so nice to have like that cooling sensation especially when you're super swollen and like it's all healing it's really nice to have some ice and like just anything really honestly anything because as I told you guys I didn't get pain medication I had Tylenol and ice packs so if you find yourself in that category definitely make sure to get some soft squishy ice packs the next item I'm going to talk about is bendy straws. Yes, plastic bendy straws. I know, I know, the turtles. No, I know, I get it. I don't normally use straws, but this is a special exception. Um, I suppose you could use a metal straw if you're comfortable, but for me, when I could not even lift my neck up, this was the only thing. This is the only way I could drink anything at all. This is the only way I could drink a smoothie or get any food into my mouth. So it is important that you try to find the ones that bend and then they can go into your mouth and you can be laying down and drinking something safely. I know, not great for the environment, but for a one-time situation post-surgery, it's nice to have a bendy straw or honestly any straw at all. The next item is something I hold very close to my heart. We talked about this already. This is my noodle pillow. I I'm attached to this, deeply, truly attached to this pillow. I cannot talk about this enough. It's not sponsored. No one's paying me to, to do this. I've bought multiple of these. I have a backup. I can't live without it. Um, and if you're stuck in bed for a week plus and you have no, no motion of this area, you can't move, you can't lift yourself up, all you can do is lay down. This guy, you can put it behind and make like a little hammock for your head which is really nice. Um, if, you're, if you have to sleep on your back for up to a week straight and you cannot roll over like I couldn't, um, this was really nice to just kind of put it up in the crease and like lean against it. That was the most I could do. Um, if you're laying in bed watching a movie, like this is really nice. And it's really soft and squishy. It's like a, ooh, ooh. it's like a Tempur-Pedic material. So it's, there's no like, it's flexible. It holds its shape, but it's not like hard. And it's not like those um those squishy travel pillows that don't really offer a lot of support so can't talk about this enough i highly recommend if you know somebody get this for them great gift if you're going through it splurge i think it's about 25 dollars. not the cheapest travel pillow but i sleep with mine every single night which is kind of embarrassing but i'm like really attached to it highly recommend that guy 10 out of 10 Noodle Pillow Company, please sponsor me. It's getting embarrassing that I'm not paid to talk about this. I just really love my noodle pillow. <laughs> All right, enough about the noodle pillow. Moving on. The next item, which kind of goes along with comfort and sleeping, if you have long hair, man or woman, um, I highly recommend scrunchies. This is actually during my first surgery, my first experience with thyroid cancer. I texted my best friend and she said, hey, I'm coming over. Can I bring you anything? And I said, please bring me scrunchies. Like I was half delirious and all I could think about was a scrunchie. 
because I had to, I mean, I wasn't taking a lot of showers, to be honest. Uh, and I just needed my hair back and away from my face and out of the way. And to have it in like a hard ponytail holder or scrunchie, um, not that comfortable. Not that comfortable to sleep in. Got a lot of knots, got a lot of tangles, not very soft. Um, this was so much better and so much easier to just like do like a quick, I can't even deal white right now. Yeah, so this, prime for sleeping, prime for hanging out. There's going to be a lot of lounge days, so prep up, get your favorite PJs, get your scrunchies. It's going to be a lot of resting. The next item is something I use every day, twice a day. Uh, it's a pill holder. So I know it's like what grandmas use, but um, if you have to take a medication every day for the rest of your life, the days all kind of blur together. It's really annoying to open a pill bottle every single day. Um, and you never know, like, did I take it today or did I not? So this is really helpful because it says the days of the week, the time of day, and then you can remember, like, obviously if it's gone, you've taken it. So that's really helpful for me because I kind of do it on autopilot every morning. But if you're going to be taking a synthetic thyroid replacement, um, it's nice to have this right, right by your bed. So as soon as you wake up, you just pop it in. So any type of pill organizer will work. If you just take morning medications or you just take night medications, you can get the ones that only have one row. Um, I take medications morning and night, so I have the AM PM version, but either way, those really save my butt because I, I do not have the time to unscrew a bottle every single morning and every single night. It's just not, not going to happen. And I also won't remember. And I mean, I just don't have the time. Next up, I recommend anti-itch cream. This saved my life. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's other people too. When I was healing, I got in certain stages, I got really itchy. Like my, my areas got really, really itchy. And obviously you can't scratch it. It's a new wound or it's a freshly healed wound. And the skin here is really delicate. If I scratch it, I, there's all kind of nerve craziness going on. I do not really want to scratch my neck ever. Um, even, what is it now, six or seven months out, I get like weird nerve activity where things, I call it like an itch attack. Like the itch just happens and I can't make it stop. So I keep this with me all the time. It's a 1% hydrocortisone anti-itch cream. So I just have this in my purse. Um, comes in handy a lot. I never really can predict when I'm going to get that like crazy overwhelming itch on my neck. It just itches a lot sometimes and I don't know what else to say. So keep that on hand. That's really nice. As well as any scar creams that you prefer or that your doctor recommends, keep those on hand if you would like. I've chosen not to use those anymore just because I'm happy with the way everything's healing and I had a really bad experience with the steroid injections. So I'm choosing just to rock what we've got. On that note, I do have days where I don't want to talk about it. I don't want people to ask me about it. And especially fresh out of surgery when the scars are really brand new or you even still have bandages or stitches or whatever happens with your situation, you don't always want to answer questions and people don't always have the best timing or sensitivity to ask those questions. So I highly recommend getting a scarf or wearing a hoodie or even both, weather permitting. This is my hoodie. It says effing grateful. This is from Ariana Grande's merch line. Wearing the hoodie, I found, almost exactly covers this whole area. So if you have any surgery done in this area, you can just pop that on and turn off the questions. It's so nice when you're just tired. You just want to get a cup of coffee or something, and you don't want people to stop and stare at you or ask questions. Or even if you don't ask questions or no one's actually looking at you, you kind of have that feeling of like, what are they thinking? What do they want to say? Or, or when people do like the, they look you in the eyes, they say hi, and then they look down and they look up again. And you kind of catch them like, it's, I mean, it's okay, but some days you're just not in the mood. And that's fine too. If you just want to check out for a bit or live your daily life, not be harassed by people, I get it. Scarf, hoodie, especially those first couple weeks or months when you're still getting used to it, you're not born with this. And all this attention is really a lot. And even if it's not like a lot of attention, it feels like a lot of attention. It's nice to just go back and have no one think twice about you or look at your neck and just kind of like blend in for a bit. If you're having your surgery during the summer, I highly recommend picking up a really high SPF sunscreen because the skin is brand baby new. And if you get any sun on that, um, I was told that your skin will kind of overreact and produce a lot of pigmentation to protect it. 
so it's really important that you try to keep it covered. I know scarves at the beach don't really work, um, but what you can do is use like a really thick SPF stick. So I have this 55 one right here. I just take like a little scoop with my fingernail and I just kind of like wipe it directly on the scar. Um, I have a regular lotion that's really nice and non-greasy. I even have a powder that I can kind of just like pat, pat, pat. Like if it's like midday and I feel like I need a little bit more protection, I can use the powder. And I even have a spray, which is my personal favorite. I can't find the purse size right now, but there's also a really small like one ounce bottle you can buy and just take it with you everywhere. If you're ever in the sun, and I'm so crazy about this, but I will just straight up like be walking down the street and be like, I feel a little bit of sun protected. You're good to go, nothing messy about it. And I feel so much better knowing that my scars are gonna heal the best they can. So if you're getting your surgery in the summer or spring or anywhere that you live, it's sunny. Highly, highly recommend having different sunscreen options, whatever works best for you. Um, and even up to one year after, you need to keep it protected. You don't have to hide from the sun. I live in California, I've been to the beach, but definitely think about protecting it first and foremost, even if you don't wear sunscreen anywhere else on your body, make sure to cover your neck and protect your neck. In terms of sitting around waiting to feel better and waiting to get your strength back and waiting to get all your mobility back, um, I lost my mind. Um, I definitely lost my mind during radiation. That was really challenging to be locked in my room for three days. Uh, I would recommend indulging in a really trashy reality television show. My shows of choice were Keeping Up with the Kardashians and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And even better is if you start it from season one, you get to see the progression of like how crazy people can go and also how dated the shows were because they were like 10 plus years old. I had my iPad and my headphones and I would walk around my house constantly watching these like glorified soap operas and it just made me feel a lot less lonely. Like I love to FaceTime, I love to talk to my friends on the phone, but I can't expect someone to be on the phone with me 24 hours a day. But man, Lisa Vanderpump, Kim Kardashian, they were my best friends. And it's really kind of pathetic, but I just needed someone to talk to me, something lighthearted. And then the drama and the problems that they, they had were so silly. And like, it kind of took my mind off the fact that I was facing something really a lot more serious. And so it kind of had this like escape effect where I could just kind of indulge in someone's petty life problems. And I didn't have to think about the seriousness of my life problem. Whatever you choose, have a good TV show on deck and just go all the way in. Another thing that helped me a lot was picking up a craft. Um, it might not be for everyone, but I picked up cross stitching. And so I made this really fun cactus out of a kit that I bought. And then now I'm making one that's gonna say, you are so loved for my niece. So it's a fun little skill that I picked up. It takes a long time. Like this took me a week probably um, of constant, like I'd wake up at 9 a.m., I would work on this and I would have something to do all day long. So pick up something that's really time consuming and kind of is just like routine and like it just passes the time because sitting around either in isolation or in recovery is really challenging, especially if you're someone who's active or you like to go out and have fun with friends. Like you, you don't get an option. You just have to be alone. So finding ways to be comfortable with yourself and pass the time and entertain yourself a little bit, those things were everything for me. And if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out my previous videos talking about both experiences with thyroid cancer. If you're facing an upcoming surgery, just know that I'm thinking about you. I know how much it hurts both inside and out. Um, it will get better. If you're a friend or a family member or a caregiver in some other way, know that your role is so important. Even if you never hear the words thank you, like my mom was, my mom had to pick me up out of bed. Like, how can you say thank you for that? So just know that you're so appreciated and to watch this video to help someone else is amazing. And any of these items would be great gift ideas for someone just to let them know you're thinking of them or, you know, get them through yourself. I'll link as much as I can in the bio below. So if you wanted to buy any of these items, it'll be easy for you to find. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you want me to talk about in my next video. Or be sure to watch my first two videos describing my first experiences with thyroid cancer. You can follow me on Instagram or email me and I'm, I'll be sure to get back to you. Oh, thanks for watching. Bye.